Alright, the horse needs to go away and roach. And I'm not sure if that's gonna be good enough. I would like to see the data of how many matches got decided by having last play. In the past, they released such a data and apparently it wasn't too significant. But I suppose a lot of players are just really bad at the game, so maybe it didn't matter for them. But yeah, I would like to see data as well. Statistics, fucking bring it on. I like that. Because if you don't see the statistics, we're just like arguing with feelings. Like, I feel this is not good or I feel this is not good. Of course, we can, we can think about it and try to use logic. But ultimately, statistics are pretty good to have. Yeah, we gotta get the mecha guys out. Easier to balance, probably the reason. I don't I don't think that's balanced. I think they they made one mistake or they keep making one mistake and this is what I saw in many many games in the past and a lot of them just straight up died. And this is a big one. Is that the first grant was pretty fucking hardcore. I have to say. The first grant was like brutally hardcore. It didn't hold your hand. It was full of like like like, you could just play a weather effect and everything with the rule went down to one. It was just very hardcore. But it changed. Weather went from like, awesome, to like an insanely good strategic play, to basically worthless. Right now. And I saw that approach in many games in the past that they just tried to balance the game around those who sucked at the game but ultimately everyone ended up presenting the game or at least the those changes because that's kind of because people value the complexity the game has to offer later on and they might be frustrated as hell early on that some crazy effects uh, are in the game, and sometimes balance is, is like 100% warranted. But uh, sometimes get good is the answer. I would tell you from my maybe biased point of view, 80% of my losses came from not having last play, maybe 85, but well, I could also just be a salty loser. <laughs> I can tell you for sure that last say feels unfair or just cheap, cheap, maybe cheap is the best word for it because last say means your opponent has a move that you have no answer to. You can never have it. You can have Scorch. His last play could be like play an infinite value guy and you have the perfect counter to it. But if you didn't get, if you didn't win round one, then he has a play that cannot be interrupted. That's the ultimate move. And it's not because of his deck, but because he has last say. But this is a turn-based game, so I have no idea how to, how can they even uh, fix that. So, uh, sorry, I don't know anything about that. The one game, but I did play a, sh a, a lot of games, and there are games, what Grant will probably never become, is that there are games that, that have simultaneous turns, and uh, if done right, they are awesome. So that's actually one solution to last say, that people are making decisions at the same time, which is just awesome.
but it's so hard to pull off. Like, honestly, I just have to say that probably simultaneous turns, g turn games are gonna be the future if developers start figuring out how to make it right. Because currently, they are freaking clueless about it. And also, the audience is not used to it, because that matters as well. Feeling do matter in games, like if card feels like it decides a game, even if it doesn't, can ruin a player experience. Yeah, feel your feelings are definitely important. But this is a strategy game, so basically, like I don't, I don't really bring up psychology. I I really enjoy psychology, learning about psychology, but I rarely bring up psychology. But basically, there are types of people, like, this is just very basic stuff, who, like, prefer, like, logic, feelings, whatever. But, like, no one really is exclusive to one, one or another. But, like, strategy games, definitely, uh, join those who, uh, like thinking. So, like, feelings alone are not gonna be enough, I believe. I think players are gonna predominantly want to want to play a game that is challenging and kind of makes sense It was fun, especially spamming Arthusa Adepts with hand salt. Uh, I like simultaneous turn idea. Make Reddit post long time ago about what? Yeah, made Reddit post long time ago about adding it to Grant and was very downvoted. That makes sense because, <clears throat> and I'm I don't think it would be a good idea for Grant because I did see that before. Wow, I don't even have to bring up another example. I can just literally bring up Grant. Is that? The, the game is a certain way. Like, I know for a fact that a, that a lot of you are still, like, sending me comments that, you know, I would like to play the old Grant. I, I preferred how the old Grant was designed. And if gold, old Grant was, like, still available, I might still play that. And, uh... And that's 1% justified. Because when you change a game, like, in a way, like, once you make the game accessible to the audience, you kind of want to change the game, you want to improve that concept. You, wanna, you don't want to redesign it, because in a way you're kind of betraying your audience. I think we just gotta play this uh, Ancient Foglet here, and that's gonna be it. I've seen it done in the past, and it rarely works. That was I. That that that's the reason I was so uh, hesitant about Homecoming because if they change the game, like let's just say you have a shooter game. This is a this is a very dumb example, but I think it really illustrates the point. Let's just say you have a, a okay shooter game, but you want you you have an idea. You're changing that shooter game to what? You're changing that shooter game to an awesome driving game. What happens? Your current audience is just completely disappointed. It doesn't matter if you made some other good decisions. Then you still need to bring in that new audience. But the game already has negative reviews, like crazy. Bunch of disappointed players. I don't know, I don't know if this really worked for any studio. But I think we're just gonna pass here. Can I just... 
Like one game that I did play, I, I rarely do these history lessons that I what I did, but like I one game that I did play, I'm not sure if any of you did, it was Robocraft. And that game pass. Well just pass. And that game changed a lot. It started out like a World of Tanks kind of game. And I liked it. It was basically like but I'm not really trying to promote Robocap, but you gotta hear the end of the story. So, it was like a World of Tanks kind of game. You just made uh, vehicles that you had to engineer out of blocks and made a lot of sense. It was cool, it was hard, and it was challenging. But then they changed it. They, they dumbed it down. They tried to be like MOBAs. Then they tried to... We made no sense. Then they tried to be like, uh, then they, they went for like, uh, treasure boxes because everyone's gotta have that, right? And they changed some other dumb crap, plus all the while they were just trying to make it more accessible. That means just it was just dumbed down to the point where it was completely pointless. Uh... Yeah, this is not the best. I do have a way to destroy units. We're gonna see how well it's gonna work. It's not a good example. But because that game basically changed for the worse all the time. I can't really bring up an example of a game that just like completely changed. Well, Gwent is the only game that just completely changed. Not strictly for the worse, but this is a kind of good example that if the, if the game was released like that, I think it would have been better received. Uh, the changes would have... well, the current version would have been better received than just releasing the old version. People got used to that, liked that, and now we got this version and some people are just like, hey, this is cool, kinda, but I would like to play the old version because I, I value things in the old version. And I definitely can say that as well. Like, I definitely value some things in the old version myself. Let's go with the Archispore now. Hopefully we can kill the Necker. That helps a lot. Agree with what you said? Very wise of you. I just played a lot of games. I can't take credit for gaming a lot. It, it doesn't prepare for you. You prepare you for life as much as I like, I would like. <laughs> oh. So basically a lot of people are just have this, like they liked Old Gwent. They liked Old, let's just say that Old Gwent was like a 9 out of 10 in their hearts. But the current Gwent is like an 8 out of 10. But they can't play it. Because old Gwent was better. Hmm. I don't know if I want to play the Imperial Mantic Core. Well, actually, we might just play that. Imperial Manticore is probably not going to get a lot of value here. So it looks like at most a free. Since the release of Homecoming, a few things have changed. And simply said, the changes were reworks towards uh, the old Gwent. I guess that's undeniable right now. So let's see where they are going next. That's annoying.
Uh, I'm just gonna play the Harpy Egg. Okay, let's go with that. <laughs> if you can make some changes in the current vent, what would you do? Because I don't think the current vent is... is... bad. By any means, it's not bad. But I would just simply just like... Sh just like shoveling content make make some new keyboards i think that's that's what we really need i don't think there's there's not anything necessarily wrong with the design i do have a problem with like artifacts but that's just like you know artifacts i have a problem with this binary design i would cut down on the rng i would have these binary hard counter cards have like semi counters like it has like armor on it or whatnot I would like to see that. Just just more content, get rid of the hard counters, uh, or not get rid of the hard counters necessarily, but like also put in soft counters and just like a little bit cut down on the RNG. But like overall they're kind of a good job. Rose are not in a good spot, but I don't think they will ever change this at this point. Yeah, I'll just hit that guy. So I'm gonna have a 12 pointer in the end. Well, we're gonna hit that for sure. It was it was hard to. The reason I hit Count Coldwell is because when the Imperial Manticore dies, it's gonna kill Roach or Vivus, and if I weaken any of these, then I can trigger their death rattle. That I would rather like to avoid if he doesn't have a way to trigger it himself. I definitely need to destroy three units. There's no question about that. To trigger... Oh, that's bad. I'm gonna have a 12 in the in the back. Count Coldwell. God damn it. Yeah, I'm in trouble. Nope. That's a win. Kinda underestimated. Yeah, no, I totally underestimated how much power I'm gonna have. Yeah, way underestimated. But yeah, GG. That's a crazy swing. Anyway, GG, spicy can. <laughs> Alright, no harpy. Uh, that's kinda good. We don't need the Cyclops. Let's go with that. Yeah, I'm not passing. Yeah, let's go with the rider. Why not? 
They guys are so damn common. I'm playing veterans or great sword or s what? I'm not, not sure what SK is. Oh, Skellig Control. Oh, felt completely different. Every deck had its unique feel and game plan. That's what I miss the most in Homecoming. I think we gotta play the cat. Yeah, that makes sense. The thing is, currently we just don't have that many cards. They need to release more cards. Like, would it would it really help if we had twice as many cards? Because we're kind of at the point, because many card games are at this point, that they just release the base set and they have like X cards. X amount of cards. But... As they start releasing expansions and booster packs and whatnot, whatnot, then suddenly you're gonna have, instead of like X amount of cards, you're gonna have three times as many cards. And it doesn't feel as bad. Then they might just go for a different system that, okay, we, we kind of have too many cards now. So we gotta just uh, make sure that some older cards are no longer playable. What? Oh. How are they played? I just tell him to hurry up. You tax my patience. You tax my patience. So they better d drop some massive content in March. Uh I hope they are prepared, because they kind of got to this homecoming mess, because they just didn't have content, that they just said like, okay, we didn't have content, we just ended up uh, making some, uh, by their mission, uh, that dumb changes, however, I, 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 I wouldn't say they were like a home run by any means, but I had mixed feelings about them, but definitely not completely without merit. Twenty-six points. That's a lot of points. It's putting everything in the back. We're all dressed up just for you. Oh, what can I get out? Oh, that's actually pretty good. Do we want to keep playing here? So, 5 versus 5. And the best he can do... Is 16. Plus 2. No, no, plus 3. He can also hear... Come on, this, this has to take it. Now we're passing. We're gonna get a card advantage. That's gotta be good enough. Screw you, man. The only way he can take it in one card is if he plays Woodland Spirit with a with a 13 pointer. Yep. But we do have a card advantage. And if he tries to push us, it's not going to be as as clean. Yeah, Spirit Man Hero Power, but does he really want to use Hero Power? Uh, we should make sure to have one throwaway trash unit, just in case he plays nothing.
Alright, let's go with that. So he wants to go for a long round. Yeah, we're just gonna play the Rod Fiend. Hope to draw into one of the golds, so this is gonna be just straight up equal to the other gold. Maybe draw into the spear, that would be nice. <clears throat> See ya, love. So, we can try to keep the Necker. Let's see how many consumes we have. We have six consumes, so we don't have to have the Cyclops in here. That's not good. We actually ended up uh, bricking the Naglfar. So we have to kick one of the golds. Doesn't matter which one. That's not good. Uh, we can start with Knackers. That's good. Do I kill that? I think it has to happen. So currently the Manticore doesn't really have a high value. So I can play Manticore, kill one of those riders, 4 point. But I can also just get out the Harpy. So that's better. So I'm gonna work on one of the riders. And actually... get this out so in case he has any uh, way to hit me uh, he can use it right now yeah we ought to use up the one that damages with the Cyclops. I sense your pain. I see your fear. That's possibly not the biggest. That's pretty big. But possibly not the biggest. Also, we might need to con uh, consider that he's gonna use the count as well. Because it's not in the graveyard, and they usually have it. So we're gonna wait with the Grout Professional. Manticore. Can he kill the Manticore? I don't know. That's Manticore. So we can do uh, Stabby Cyclops next turn, maybe. Yeah, that's okay. I can delete the Necker Warrior. Doesn't get any stronger. Sure. 
I really hope he has has a count. Doesn't matter. Whatever, I'll just keep killing that. Well, I... Yeah, not sure... Well, we could have played the Brewers earlier. Let's not eat more. Yeah, it's probably gonna be 14. And the last one is gonna be... 2... Plus 8... Plus 10. So it's gonna be 20. Which is actually... Uh, really, really good. So I think we're gonna lose. I kinda lost 2 points here. By not playing the Brewers. We gotta, we gotta boost it for a little bit more. Yeah, we have to eat three. Like, we don't have a choice. Can I eat an enemies? They're a lot more juicy. So that's gonna be a fancy goal. Not your lucky day. Oh no! Get out of the Rivia! Holy crap! That's not what I expected. Definitely made a huge mistake. By not playing it earlier. Just eat everything. Oh my god, taken down by Geralt. Mistakes were made. I didn't expect that. GG.